Simon Rex, what's up? We're coming live from Seattle at the MTV Gamers premiere party. This is the future of interactive video games, and we're bringing it to you now. Right, that is Chun-Li, and I'll tell you... What? Chun-Li? I'll give you a flying flash kick. All right, all right, enough of the video games. So listen to what we got up in this hour. You won't believe this. We got the best video games you've ever seen in your life. This is like the mecca of arcades for anyone who loves games. We got Beck and Coolio doing a live performance. All these celebrities are here I playing know, games. I can't believe it. And, well, speaking of celebrities, Peter King standing by. Peter, what's up? Hey, thank you, Simon and Carmen. Let me tell you, I'm in my element. This place rules. Okay, it took a lot of the most creative minds in the world of showbiz to make GameWorks happen. One of those minds belongs to a guy named, uh, what's his name? Steven Spielberg. Now, he couldn't be here tonight, he wanted to, but he's got a very special message for all of us, so check this out. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, in Rhode Island, or I'm on Rhode Island, uh, making Amistad for DreamWorks, and I have not been able to find a way out of making the movie to come out uh, to uh, Seattle. Uh, today to share the opening events, and I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but I'll be watching it you know, on MTV along with everybody else. I'm really proud of the work everyone's done uh, to date, and I look forward to getting there uh, whenever I finish here uh, to get my hands on those joysticks and those little buttons myself, uh, because I'm an addicted uh, game addict. I always have been, and that's the reason of, for my involvement in Sega Game Works. So thanks, thanks everybody uh, for coming, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Hey, thank you, Steven. Now, Mr. Spielberg, his genius mind wasn't the only one involved in the creation of GameWorks. There were some others. Now we want you to hear from them. The ultimate place to play games with friends. I think one of the interesting concepts about this place is it's a wonderful marriage of low and high tech. What we wanted to build was this this game factory that had been around um, for a long, long time. So uh, we, we invented this general gaming company. And GameWorks is actually in that company's factory. You'll notice that as you walk around GameWorks, you walk from one environment to another, and it's like a musical crossfade. This room has its own sound, its own light level, and its own mix of games, and, and, and that creates kind of a, a vibe, kind of an energy level there. In the arena, um, we are featuring signature games. They're almost like rides that operate like video games. It's a place that I think you'll hear a lot of applause. You know, as you walk in the door, you'll hear people cheering for each other and yelling and laughing. The area is about competition. There, there's a, a balcony area that you can stand and watch people play. It's where the latest games are introduced to the world. We have the ability to take the highest uh, score in the room and use the projector in the ceiling to, um, to display the face of the hottest player in the room. It's a place for you to go up to the internet lounge where you can get game tips and then hopefully relax for a second and then go back down and fight. It's a place where you can go do something constructive. Instead of blowing something up, you can find somebody to talk to. They're also built around the, the outside of the loft um, classic games, the games from the 70s, 80s, and 90s that refuse to die. And they're restored games. They're in perfect condition. They have you know, nice crisp monitors. And, and it's really neat to play the game. When you walk through the door, I want you to be amazed. I want you to realize that there's a destination here, that you have landed. <laughs>
night, all you video game heads. I'm Simon Rex, and uh, I'm here at the MTV Game Works premiere party, and right now I'm at Game Arc. It's like an eight-player, uh, multi-spectacular video game, and Will Smith is checking it out. What do you think about it? Man, this is, all, this is hot. See, like, what it is, I'm playing against all these other guys, right? But they're a little better than me. That's why they keep killing me, you know? But I'm, I'm about to get real good at it. But, like, as you can see, you know, I'm in this, we're inside of these tunnels, and, you know, it's not unlike a movie you know it's like you're in the middle of a movie fighting a lot of guys for some stuff well speaking of that don't you got a movie coming out where you're fighting aliens like this yeah it's called uh men in black july 2nd see it's not it's not like independence day it's very different this movie's a comedy with myself and tommy lee jones we're the men in black we get to do a lot of shooting and jumping and stuff hey it's the big movie of the summer i hope so and what do you play video games on your own time oh yeah absolutely i'm i'm hooked like real bad on resident evil that's the game isn't it one yeah that one's real high right, i'm gonna let you play uh, right now i'm gonna show the rest of the country what this game is all about roll it we have great home systems, we can rent a videotape, we have cable, but for some reason, people still want to have that theatrical experience. GameMark will do that to gaming, what movie theaters did to movies. You sit in a chair that has uh, surround sound built into it, there's vibration built into the seat, it moves a little bit, you have the, the coolest controller there is, and an eight foot wide projection screen that actually wraps around the viewer. The, the kind of hook for that is that it's eight players that are very, very well connected together. So you're playing against your friends right there in the same room. Well, GameArk in itself is, a, uh, is really a PlayStation. And this is designed so we can do different types of games on it. And we're starting out with a modified version of uh, Descent 2. It'll always be something that you can go to GameWorks and actually see the very best technology that's out there on GameArk. And it's really easy to get disoriented pretty quickly in this game. Controls are a little bit more elaborate than most video games, but that's because you're moving in full three dimensions. For your right hand, forward will move the nose down, backwards will move the nose up, to the right will move the nose to the right and to the left this way. In addition to just being able to go forward and pull back, you're also going to be able to spin in a whole bunch of different directions. You and a bunch of friends are flying around in these gigantic underground mines. The object is to find your friends and blow holes in them with your weaponry. You've got a room full of people that are playing the same game, and, and it gets really noisy. I mean, people screaming at each other, and, and we want that rowdy feeling to happen around game life, and that's what that game is about. Well, I gotta tell you guys, I feel right at home amongst the waves here, even if I am in Seattle. Now, these guys are competing for a trip to Vegas for the GameWorks opening there, and a Sega Saturn home console and a ton of games. Now, tell me that ain't awesome. Gentlemen, start your engines! Come on, get them started, guys! And I want you to know, we got Brian, Ronnie, and Scott, three stud muffins. We narrowed it down from thousands of competitors. Let's get this thing going! Well, our three young champions to be have all got a fascinating, lightning quick start out of the blocks. Everyone thinks Ron Cunningham here in the middle, little Ronnie, is the man to beat. Now, I gotta tell you a little bit about the physics of this game. You can steer with the steering wheel, left to right, of course, but if you really want to turn, you've got to lean your weight all the way over, just like on a real wave runner. It's a two-lap race. Right about now, they're at the halfway point of the first lap. The laps are very long. There's a lot of conditions they got to look out for. A, there's jumps and there's obstacles, not to mention the S-turns throughout the course. But as you see the side of the course, the water gets very shallow. You can hit the rocks or the sand. you got to be real careful. Also, you can see right here, there's a lot of waves. That's why they're called wave runners, that they got to negotiate. This is coming up as the finish of the first lap. See how the boys look over the jump. They're all pumping their fists in the air. They're looking pretty good. We just started the second lap. Oh, uh, time will tell who will win. Again, the 
brutality of these multiplayer games is amazing. These guys are trying to bump each other right off the course. Then again, there's a lot at stake. right now kind of a real close tie for a second between Ron and Scott coming up on the halfway point of the final lap Ryan's got a pretty good lead just about even between uh, Scott and Ron this is getting nuts let's see uh, ooh some bumping going on there oh my goodness folks Scott just jumped out to the lead he's looking really solid the whole time it looks it looks like a shoe in to win fans are going crazy who's it gonna be Ron could come up from behind Scott's got it Scott's going to Vegas yeah congratulations here's your trophy my man you won you're going to Vegas and you just want a Sega Saturn home console and a bunch of games can I come over and play it oh yeah all right, insane. Are you going to stick around? we got Coolio and Beck coming up. Definitely. definitely. Okay, I want to invite you guys to stick around, too. we got Coolio Beck, Lost Celebrities, live performances. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching. Woo! Are you having a great time? Yes. You have your own mic. I guess you don't need mine. Oops. It's quite all right. We're having fun. We're dropping drinks. It's all good. We're having a good time here at the party. There's lots of video games. The kids are running around. Beck played. How about you? Are you having a wonderful time? I am. I can't wait to play this next game. Not only do you play it, it kind of plays you. you got to check it out. Super GT is, you know, really about uh, racing the ultimate supercars. The uh, cabinet that it's built into is not just a, a box, you know, with a steering wheel mounted on it, but in fact it feels a little like a car interior. It actually leans as you go into turns and, and you, you feel the response of the car physically. And then that coupled with these wonderfully high resolution graphics makes an experience that feels a lot like driving a really fast car. I think the thing that makes Sega Super GT such a great game is that you play it once and you're hooked. You should never drive in manual when you first start this game. You should learn the track before you even attempt to try and learn how to shift the car. Ah. You even play it back like this so you can get the feel of the car. You can actually feel the road trying to fight you and you have to actually fight the steering wheel to keep the uh, car on the road. The motion of the car actually gives you the sense of coming around a corner, it pushes you towards the side of the car. You can almost feel the rear wheels of the car slipping out like that. Or you can actually link up to eight cars together so you can compete up to eight people right racing the same track. That will. If I get a car next to me, I can use it and get that car to help me get around the corner a little bit better without slamming into the corner. It's amazing how this big screen and the car and the whole field can just draw you right into it. I don't think anyone would ever let me drive their Dodge Viper like this. Welcome race fans, gentlemen, start your engines! All right, folks, this is the event you've all been waiting for. That's right, we've got Nitro burning Super GT cars ready to shake and roll. Now the winner of these three guys is going to get an all-expense paid trip to Las Vegas for two for the opening of the Game Works Fair. That's pretty cool. Okay, guys, we literally, literally wheedled these guys down to three, two, one. Three guys out of a thousand. This is going to be insane. The rolling start is key. It has to do with everything. In car number one, we've got Stacy. Number two, we've got my man Curtis, who's looking good. He's a real race car driver in real life. And in lane three. We've got Dena. 
Now it's a four lap race. This underwater, under the tunnel stuff is crazy. The coagulation in the turns is very dangerous. Average lap times are about 32 seconds. And that is the end of the first lap. We've got times ranging about 34, a little high. We're on lap two right now. They crashed into each other. These guys are trying to throw each other into the wall in these things. They're averaging scale speeds of over 200 miles an hour. Some of the guys go with the automatic transmission. Some of these guys choose the manual. Coming out of these turns is crucial. They do a power slide by letting off the gas, turning and then punching it out. That's the end of lap two right there. We just hit lap three. And in first place, it's looking like Denna, my man, in lane three. Second place is Stacy Curtis, the true to life race car driver. He's in third. Maybe he's waiting to pick his spot before he blasts through these guys. I will note, semi final action to have these guys blasting and come from behind victories. But the crowd is going nuts, cheering their men on. They can't believe it. This is brutal competition. These guys are running each other into the wall. coming into lap four. Dana just wants to maintain it, but he's got stiff competition. Stacy just took the lead. Oh my gosh, here comes Curtis. These guys are neck and neck, or wheel and wheel, as I should say. It's getting dangerous, guys. I just hope they got their seatbelts on. Now, the seats they're in, they shake and wiggle with every hit and contour that they take and hit the road. It's looking like, it's looking like Curtis. Curtis is coming into the finish line. He wants to go to Vegas, but he just hit the wall. He just blew it, and Denna just went by. Oh my gosh. Come from behind, victory for Denna. Way to go, my man. You are going to Vegas, buddy. Thank you, man, thank you. Here's your trophy. This is your winner. Can you believe it? Who are you taking with you? I don't know, probably guys out there. Yeah, you shouldn't have a hard time finding anybody. Anyway, let's go and see what's happening over at the loading dock. Way to go. Oh golly, thanks PK, that looks like a lot of fun, but right now we're having some more fun. Check out Beck!
Snow Stack, DJ Swap, Showboat, Hound Out, Showboat, good effect. Thank you all very much. game in the world takes you 25 feet in the air and drops you on your tush. Keep it here. Yeah. Carmen, I am here with Jillian Anderson, of course, from X-Files fame. We're hanging out in the Cyber Lounge. Now, if you're sick of killing people in your fighting games, or maybe getting a little nauseous in the 360-degree uh, computer games, oh, yeah. as we were discussing earlier, the Cyber Lounge is a good place to get away. Maybe check out the X-Files on uh, web TV. Oh, you can? Yeah, I was doing that, seeing if there's any photos of you. Oh, like what kind of photos? I don't know. Just see what uh, they had. Maybe okay. see what next, next week's uh, storyline was or something. They know that stuff already? Yeah, you know, kids on the web, they know everything. So in the cyber lounge, you can, you know, chop on the internet and see what's going on. Plus, the best part of this area to me is we're surrounded by rebuilt classic video games like Miss Pac-Man, Centipede, yeah, yeah, Millipede, yeah, yeah. Donkey all these Kong. Things. What was your game? Is there Donkey Kong? There's Donkey Kong. <laughs> Mario Brothers. I've never, I've never see, Centipede. Games, but it's fabulous that they're here. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Good. See, they love Good. the video games, too. We're going to show you guys a package right now about all these classic rebuilt video games that they got here in the Cyber Lounge. This is my favorite world over here, so check this out. Okay. I'll be there. And these will be all the classics, you know, Kong, Centipede, all, all those games that we, you know, wasted our, our uh, high school or junior high or elementary school years on. Don't say wasted, it's what made us what we are today. <laughs> uh -oh. But I'm telling you, when you used to play for like 10 hours a day, you got pretty damn good at it. Oh yeah, and you knew exactly when to get those ghosts. I was like 12, so there wasn't anything else for me to do except play video games. Atari, Miss Pac-Man, it was all the thing. I used to play this the stop and go when I was like 11 years old. This is a big deal. We're in the middle of it. Oh, you're in the middle? We're playing two player. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. I remember trying to beat my friend's highest score. And everywhere I went that had centipede, his initials were always on the top. Rad. R-A-D. It's not a cool game when you lose. We'll keep on playing. It's probably been about 10 years since I've played Frogger. It's a great game, though. I'm going to spend all my lunch money playing this game. Hey, you know what's popular nowadays is rollerblades, right? When this game came out, what was popular was roller skates. <laughs> you even get so pissed about to hit the machine. If I spent 10 or $15 a night just on quarters to play the game. It's kind of weird to see these games come back, though. You thought they were gone forever. I'm concentrating. Please don't ruin my concentration. We were at the video arcade playing this game for hours every day. <laughs> we have a whole generation now of adults, of, of grown-ups that are out kind of beginning to run the world that have never known a world that wasn't filled with video games. You know, all day long we've been showing you great video games and great celebrities. Well, now it's time to put the two together like cheese and crackers. And here's Peter King to explain it. What's up, Peter? Hey, well, let me tell you, Simone. We've got a celebrity race like you have never seen before. We're on the Indy 500. We've got eight celebrities stocked up, big stars and little cars. It's going to be good. I can tell you who everyone is, but basically it's Will Smith and a bunch of his white friends. This is going to be a slaughterhouse. Gentlemen, start your engines! Start your engine. Race begins from 
Okay, we got Will Smith in car one. He's our favorite tonight. He's a video game freak. <laughs> and there go the cars, Jiggle Jiggle. We've got that. Our amazing songs just tonight. Ripping it up. Will Game for car four. Gonna want to watch out for him, guys. He's pretty crafty, they say. The whole concept here is speed and abuse your competitor. So if you look at the numbers in the top left of the screen, you'll see what place everybody is in. We've got a swinger in first place over there in uh, car number six. He's going pretty good. I believe we got a uh, Weird Al down there in second place, taking up the top two spots. Oh! That's not good. He struck out. Vince Vaughn looking good from Swingers in car six. We got Richard Crane in car seven. Weird Al, of course, in eight, can't miss him. Back in two, looking pretty good. Mr. Bill Gates, ladies and gentlemen, in fourth, probably trying to be nice to the kids tonight. Katzenberg in car number three. I don't know if it's the car shaking or if it's him. Look at this solid performance from the swinger. First place in car six down there. Vince Vaughn looking very good and looking good at the video game too. Uh, no mercy among the celebrities. Maybe they're jealous of each other. I don't know. Just want to pound each other into the ground. First place, still a swinger. Vince Vaughn. Weird Al dropped down to sixth place. Come on, Al. Get back in the game. Will's a solid man now. Will Smith, who I told you about earlier, folks. He's in second place. Just got taken into the wall. Mm. Katzenberg is not afraid. In lane number three, just up in fifth. I think he's going the wrong way. We'll have a shuttle to take you home later after your experience tonight. Oh, he's down in second place. Okay, Weird Al in first place, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to love that kid. Ah, uh, drop the second. It's coming down. Time extended. A good driver will pass the time extended and keep it going for everybody. Weird Al holding down a solid first place. Sean Kenny from Allison Chains in lane five. Third place, make that fourth place. I'm sorry. I cannot beat the results quick enough. The cars are going so fast. The scale speeds are about 400 miles an hour here tonight. Weird Al's in first. I want to just call him out, people. He's pretty weird. Looking for Will Smith to come back from seventh place, folks. That's my bet. We can't do it. We have a surprise winner at the end. It's Vince Vaughn from Swingers. Vince, yes. How do you feel? I can't. I, I don't know. I, I just. I, I just want to get through the race, and somehow I. I, I won the race, and. Uh, it was you and Weird Al neck to neck? How do you feel? I don't know. I mean, Weird Al was my inspiration to start this, and now I'm beating him. I feel so mixed about all of it. No, Al, you are the man. I think Al. Well, hey, look, look. While these guys work it out, you want to keep it here, because on the way we got a live performance from Coolio. We also got the biggest video game in the entire world. But all day long, we've been setting up video cameras to get people's reactions. So right now, check out the current player of the moment. It's always so funny to see people's reactions when they're playing video games, the way they move and twitch their face, like they're really there. It's a great idea. Anyway, listen, uh, on the way, we have got a performance from Coolio Live that you got to check out. But right now, Peter King's down in the arena, and I'm wondering what he's, what he's up to. Peter, what's going on? Well, let me tell you, Simone, I am hanging out with Weird Al. How do you pronounce that last name? Yankovic. Yankovic, just like you think. Close. And we're standing next to the... Uh, signature piece here at GameWorks. This is Vertical Reality. It's an amazing game. We've been having a lot of fun all night. But I want to talk to Al a little bit because he has just recently produced and directed a video for a band called John Blue Spencer Blues Explosion. Awesome stuff. 
Well, I think you're actually just directed. It was produced by somebody else. But... Oh, well, I wanted to give you all this credit. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, that was a lot of fun. It was a really a joy to work with uh, the Boots Explosion and uh, trying to get more often to direct videos now. And it's, it's a cool thing. Yeah, it is. You've always been an awesome creator, and I mean, you're an awesome talent. You're such a talent to have around. Stop, You've no, went no. so much to our evening oh, already, no, I, and the video games are on the Indy 500. No, please. You know, it doesn't even Just matter. Just here is awesome. It doesn't even matter that I lost the Indy 500. I've already achieved my dream in life of kicking Bill Gates' butt in a car race. So. Not bad, not bad. I got to show you guys this game behind me, Vertical Reality. I can't tell you about it. Watch this. You've got to sit down in your vertical reality chair, you've got to grab onto the joystick, and you've got to defend your world against these evil machines that are taking things over. In this game, levels are truly physical levels. The computer moves you up, and you keep going until the final level at the very top, the best player, if he's really good, will be playing directly against Mr. Big. And if you uh, are not a, a really excellent player, you're going to get blown up. And when you get blown up here, you actually fall, and you can fall 25 feet. And it's pretty funny, not knowing when it's going to come, it's kind of scary. John and Steven would give their inputs and ask all the right questions. You know, a guy like Steven, if he looks at it, he likes it, you know, we can, we can do whatever we want with it. John Snotty came to me one day and said, what do you think it would be like to drop 24 feet in a chair? And we went to this company and they had a chair on a stick. We shot him 24 feet into the air and then pulled the rug out from under him and dropped him. And he got out and said, yeah, that's pretty fun. And that was kind of the birth of uh, the vertical reality ride system. Yeah, so this will be a real rock and roll, you know, a, 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 a kind of event. In the same way that, I, that we want to work with the best uh, people in every field, we want to work with the best people in, in music. The music that we put together is sort of like psycho metal hip hop, just really fast, aggressive beats, and then sort of dark, dark guitars and, and crazy sound effects. It's a crazy image. It just seems like game work to, to look at the place, to walk in the place, and go, "Oh my God, there are people falling out of the sky." and it's game work. And I'll tell you what, in case you kids are wondering well, why you can't play in an arcade like this, they're going to be all over the country soon enough, so keep your eyes out. i got to go uh, get a set a little bet with Miss Pac-Man. Yeah, you, you try and work that out, right. Simon. I think you two are made for each other, Simon and Miss Pac-Man, a new couple, right about it this week. On behalf of myself, Carmen Electro, Simon Rex, everyone at MTV, everyone here at GameWorks, thank you guys so much. God bless. Thanks for watching. Cool Wheel's going to play out. See you guys later. Don't you wish you had one of these? MTV's coverage of the GameWorks premiere party has been brought to you by Sega Saturn. That's right. Hey, that's a bad man. Check this out. We're going to break y'all off something new to the two pimpin' in the house. Lee Grant, what's up? Approaching Saturn, you are only seconds away. I have arranged for you to meet my companion. He will lead you. Watch and listen. Please don't disappoint him. He doesn't like that.